Welcome back, everyone, to another Dark Souls 2 lore through. I, uh... Before we continue with, uh... Drang Lake Castle, I just wanted to... I read what makes him give you the aura set, which is to spend 16,000, which we did, and have zero souls in your inventory. You need armor? Go... In a spot of bother, are we? Here, take this. My compliment. Are you sure? Now, I know we found Oris's armor in the gutter or whatever. But, um, I believe this is the clear one. Which, you know, is interesting. I mean, they said that the original Oris armor said that it, like, appeared to those who, like, believed or something. <laughs> or something weird like that. But, uh,. Excuse me. Um, I guess there's two different versions of it, so uh, might as well read it. I guess. Helm of Kings of the Desert Land, Hugo, first worn by Oris, the founder of Hugo. According to legend, the armor of Oris is composed of a mysterious substance that cannot be seen by cowards. What do your eyes tell you? So yeah, I mean we. Oh wow. Forty percent. Anyway, uh, so I thought I would show that off. I guess it's no new lore, but and I leveled up and I got all my stuff. So let's go back to the castle. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Another thing I want to mention that after you talk to Nishandra, then all of the bonfires you can go to become visible. So you can see that there's a one here with a question mark. We need an item to get to this one. Um, you know, we see we've been to... And it's, the number tells you what level the bonfire is at. So if you used a bonfire set, it would say two or whatever. So you can kind of see what areas you missed, and out of those areas, which like bonfires are in them that you've missed. So as you can see here, we're all good, but we have all these areas left to go. Of course, a lot of these are the DLC, so we just have a few here. But, let's go to the Central Castle Drang Lake. And there's a lot of people who don't know what the trigger is for that, but it is speaking to Nishandra. And I suppose if I were to go out on a limb and try to assume that has any lore connotations, it's probably that she, like, gives you knowledge? I don't know. Oh, well met, friend. Good to see you well. Yes, very good. Hey, Benhart. I journeyed from the distant east to perfect my swordsmanship. And legend has it that powerful beings slumber in this land. This sword has been in my family for generations, and only a real man can wield it true. I may face any man, a man, a beast. But none shall be a match for my sword. <laughs> it's a cool looking sword. I mean, we uh, we played with one in uh, Dark Souls 1. It's pretty cool. Looks like that. This land is a right mess, eh? King's gone. The people have a mad glint in their eyes. Yeah, the curse has gotten a hold of everyone. The land itself is overrun by terrible beasts. No better place to test my sword, eh? <laughs> this land is right. Alright. No better place to test my sword, eh? This is kind of a convoluted little area. So... Hey, you can't even pull it at first. There's this thing in the center. It's a door, which looks exactly like the doors in Ben and Alkin. 
But again, they said that doors were repurposed all the time. That was another one of my things that I wanted to cover on my um, loose ends video, was using that key we found in Iron Keep. However, due to the nature of what's there, uh, what you know where what where that door is that that key opens we'll, we'll probably do that after we paint the game it's like one of those like i don't know weird areas where the enemies are like okay so this is different i mean i like this there's only like one or two? Or is it that, like, you go to one area and then they all wake up? Because there's another golem here that has another one of these things that he can turn to, like, open something or do something. Okay, you can see the ghosts coming out of the wall. Which is interesting. Huh. So is there, like, ghosts b by this area that you can... I just meant to... Don't come to me! Huh. What does it say? Yeah, I got that part. Oh! Do I just go through and then bring someone back? Do I go through this door and everyone wakes up? What are these all saying? Be wary of ambush. Okay. Regret. Okay. So are they all coming back? This is an interesting thing. It really tests whether you understand mechanics or not. Oh my god. I don't think I stand a chance here. sound going which you might think might be like a generator or something all these are really good items here or all of these have some unique lore so something got powered up but then it stops Cell sword Lewitt, who looks a little heavily. Oh yeah, I didn't go to, the, there's so many loose ends. I gotta make a list of um, things and actually check them off the list and we'll just do a big <laughs> loose ends at the end because I missed so much last time. Okay. An undated great hammer wielded by a warrior from a time so ancient that there exists no record of his endeavors. Yeah, I mean, we've read other ones of those. Kaitha's Chime. Sacred Chime blessed by Kaitha, goddess of tears. Hex dedicated catalyst cannot be used to cast miracles. Kaitha, the goddess of tears, is known as a compassionate being that is with us in times of tragedy, but some believe that she is a demoness that guides us towards misfortune. Um, it is interesting because I believe... Um, yeah, Kaitha, goddess of tears, mourns those who have lost loved ones by shedding pure tears of blue. It is said that the t stone set in this ring is one such tear. And then we have this great sword. Sorcery that attacks foes using a sword made of souls. Energy is focused into a single point and wielded as a sword with both hands. Use of the sorcery is not too dissimilar to swordplay and so inherently endangers the caster. 
Um, yeah, that's a good popular thing. Let's, uh, yeah, let's grab uh, this guy. I mean, in the pet. Oh, wow. That's cool. There's still archers here. Oh, wow, he's a little bit more powerful. I feel there is someone coming behind me. an item too. Yeah, I mean this is good for uh, distraction. Does he do the dark? That's really interesting that they drop an amber herb. Thanks, Cell Sword Lewitt. Gower's Ring of Protection is here now. Okay. The ring of the assassin Gower, who has killed a half dozen kings and several distinguished clergymen. Reduces damage taken from behind. For an assassin whose own life is always at stake, the greatest liability is one's exposed back. And on top of this being an interesting ring, or I guess it's not that interesting, but what makes this ring interesting is that it blocks um, damage because it puts a woman, well, could be a guy, I guess. It's always referred as a woman in the community, but puts someone on your back so that when you get stabbed, it like tanks the damage for you. It's quite interesting. So these are like the same ones that we've seen in Hyde's Tower of Flame, I believe. Because there are some ones that you'll we'll find here. Okay, this might be a mimic. Um, but I'm gonna. Because the blood stains are all just because they opened it before. Firestorm. We just saw that one, didn't we? Used to be archers up here, and it was a little bit annoying. The archers from. Now that is a mimic if I've ever seen one. Okay. I. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Come on now. For that other one, I attacked twice and then had time to roll, so I thought I could do that here, but what I should probably do is the, not the, not the, like, slow attack, but I should have, like, I ran out of stamina there. So anyway, this came down, that's what happened, um, however, we're gonna, you know, clear this out, so we will not get to what that is. I mean, we could proceed right now. We don't need anything from over here, but I like to be thorough. If there's any items, um, and I think there's some good items over here, so. It's like a different pattern that I'm used to. So where do these guys come from? Oh. 
cool. Yeah, these are the mannequins. Just they're just sitting up in the ceiling. Okay, don't tell me we have to kill this again. Uh, but we should go and get what's in this mannequin because it's probably more of the dark set. Being reckless. I guess I should also be getting my souls. This fool comes over. <laughs> oh, another washing pool. Wow. I bet the people that knew the uh, the area really well are probably laughing at that. Although two washing pools would be great. However, they're so low damage that I wouldn't want to commit to that. Very soon we're going to be going over to the uh, Santier Spear anyway, so... So they do have some archers. Here's yet another door that doesn't open. I think they probably like were trying to give themselves potentials for like DLC and stuff. It's interesting. Oh, interesting. That's what I want. So yeah, there's where we talk to Chancellor Welliger with the open roof. We're gonna go up to that area in a moment. I guess we should. <laughs> I do like how it's like adding water effect sounds here. Oh my god. Okay, at least I have more damage resistance now. Oh god. Don't kill me. Oh, too bad. Don't need those. I don't think we've heard about the desert sorcerers yet. But we do know about a desert land. Hugo. Oh, do we read these? Yeah. Yeah. Sorcerers gloves from the distant land of Hugo appears to be a plain, thin fabric but is permeated with powerful magic. Desert sorceresses have enchanting looks and they use them to catch people off guard. Oddly enough, even those who are perceptive enough to realize the ploy fall prey to their seductions with alarming regularity. Um, do we pick up anything else? Nothing of note. Okay, and I think I hit this when I was fighting her. Uh, that's what was here before, I believe. And there's these guys over here. 
trained on whoever comes to the store, I guess. There used to be a cyan knight over here. Anyway. Yeah, that was definitely worth going that way. For the, uh... For the Estus Flash Shard. <laughs> See all these, uh... Crazy mirrors on the wall. And this weird kind of licorice view on them. They don't actually reflect anything, which is unfortunate. But there's a lot of them in here. So, yeah, there's this guy chained to this door, and his mask has a keyhole-ish thing on it, making a weird noise. And the, in this cage is a lady. Wonder why they're being kept at the top of the tower. Strong magic shield. I think we can skip reading that. Another soul vessel. And another fire seat, I guess. But we're not leveling up anything. And then key to the king's passage. King to the key, key to the King's Passage inside Drang Lake Castle. King Vendrick tried all manner of things to purge the curse that threatened his kingdom, but when every last attempt failed, the king fled through the King's Passage. Hmm. So I guess I I had spoken previously. There's his crest again on the thing. Two dragons. Um, I had spoken previously about how he did not put undead into prisons and stuff, but he obviously was uh, fighting and stuff. But at the height of the the war, he fled through the King's Passage, and now we're going to go through the King's Passage, presumably to where he went. what's on the other side of that uh, I think we might be seeing vendor here okay so again I want to I would love to do like I would love if someone had a series or like you know like if anyone really knew but a comprehensive series on the statues in the game um, there's this bust here uh, with a skinny sword and then behind him a tree which and then two people so this indicates to me it, it evokes like a like a family tree or a lineage or a line I don't know I don't know what these mean I would love if they do and again we have these headless uh, um, statues here and I think it's interesting because like you can see I don't want to get too close yet oops <laughs> that's not what I meant to do at all um, so like this is no head this has no head but then this has a head right here so does that one over there 
So some of them have heads. And uh, can I still, okay. Um, the, these come to life, and I will say that if you cut off their heads before they get to life, they instantly die. Otherwise it's a little bit harder to fight them. Ran out of stamina at the wrong time. Stone Parma. It's actually kind of rare. At least it was in when I was farming in the old game. Shield of the Castle Stone Soldiers. Sir Velstat could always be found at the king's side and followed him when he fled. The king, the knights in his service waited patiently for his return, but turned to stone before he did. So... Velstat, huh? Was always fighting at the king's side. Um, I'm gonna... Take that as reliable narration, and I'm going to say, okay, well, maybe this is not, maybe this is not Vendrick. Maybe this is um, Velstadt. Um, although it says he didn't return, sure, let's do it. Said it didn't return, they turned to stone, so maybe it's neither. Or maybe Velstadt left and Vendrick came back, but I don't know. Well, let's see who we're going to be fighting. Wow, looking glass night. Could be Velstadt, I suppose. which is called Looking Glass. He has that huge mirror. Oops. And the mirror is like super effective at uh, blocking damage. He's only focusing on me, eh? Which is fine, I could uh, take his thing. He does have uh, he does have two faces, which is cool. Or maybe three. Ooh, nice delay. I should have maybe just gone in alone. So, at some point during the fight, he, uh... It's kind of an interesting point about this. First of all, we've already fought this guy. Right before the end of Purgatory. Second of all, this can actually be, uh, regular people. So if you put your summon sign down outside of the Looking Glass Knight boss battle room, you can be summoned in as one of the shields. Ooh, I tried to roll through that. Also, spells just completely deflect off of the shield. It's a really cool shield. Yeah, see, like, even just touching it a little bit, you just completely... I love how he drops his shit and then just... Last night, soul. Well, let's see who this guy is. Maybe he's Velstadt. Maybe they turned to stone waiting for him to return and then he returned. Soul of the Looking Glass Knight who challenges visitors to the Lordless Castle. Long ago, the King's Passage was a route taken by the bravest warriors to prove themselves, and now it only prevents one from pursuing the runaway king. Hmm. I 
Interesting. Uh, anyway, that's not Velstadt. That is the Looking Glass Knight. I'm not really sure what he is, what, like, who he's supposed to be, but he is Soul Bolt. Is that new? One of the sorceries devised by Strayed. Strayed started with an unwieldy spell that backfired on its caster and in time perfected it. Huh. I should bring that to him and say, what, what, what do with this? So yeah, here are the mountains that uh, Rosabeth talked about um, crossing. I mean, we could see them from Majula, but we can kind of see them like closer up here. So now that we've gone all the way up here, now we're going far, far below to where the King, Vendrick, Velstadt have gone and retreated. And what kind of evokes the um, chaos branches We come upon, like, an area that I, ha I feel like has a very swampy feel and very, like, mystical, magical feel, like in fairy tales. Shrine of Amana. Now, it's just, um, I want to keep the shrine in a video all itself, but what I'll do is I'll kind of like go up to the first bonfire and we'll just treat this as the end of it because we're, we're a little early here. So, what would be nice is if we could um, um, just kind of, oh, nice. So yeah, these guys here are the Archdrake guys. We got their stuff before, but it is interesting what they're doing down here in uh, the Shrine of Amana. This is actually a different shield, isn't it? Shield the Archdrake of Lindelt represents a slumbering dragon. Okay, now I'm now starting to put things together. The fools who awoke the slumbering dragon earned not only its ire, but also the destruction of an entire country. The survivors buried their wrongdoings in the past, and in a show of terrible conceit, attempted to make amends by carrying on the knowledge of the wasted land. Uh-huh. That's really interesting. Okay, so... One of the DLCs deals with the Slumbering Dragon. We already saw this in the Dragon Talon. Legend has it that in the deepest reaches of the Black Gulch behind a door locked from the inside is a magnificent city built for a great Slumbering Dragon. So, if I would have to guess here, I would say that uh, the Lindelt is probably in the region of Shulva or vice versa, uh, and we'll get to uh, go around there and uh, learn all about it. But it also implies right here very strongly that, you know, no one knows what the Archdrake uh, sect, you know, the secrets they have and how they formed. But it does say that there was people that woke the slumbering dragon And the survivors buried their wrongdoings in the past and in a show of terrible conceit attempted to make amends by carrying on the knowledge of the Wasted Land. So I'm sure that the origins of the Archdrake sect appear in Sholva, the DLC with the Slumbering Dragon. Which we definitely are going to be doing 
at some point. Maybe not right away, but at some point. Um, but why would they be here? Merchant ahead. Um, I think that it has something to do with Fendrick. That's just my opinion. Something happened with Vendrick, and the Archdrake sect had interest in what happened, and so they followed him here. We can see these little uh, bugs that surround these creatures. Good, I killed them in one hit. But you'll notice, you'll notice that. You know, like, I don't really aggro these guys. Um, and it's because of these, uh, I mean, you get too close, you will, but it's because of those little, uh, what the, what, I mean, I think they're the bright bugs here. A tiny bug that produces light. Bright bugs are said to comfort the dead and are found in the marshlands leading to the undead crypt. This certainly looks like a marshland, and, uh, we don't know where the undead crypt is yet, but by ingesting a bright bug just before death, the moment at which they glow most brightly, one attains great power for a short time, often utilized as a last resort for adventurers who have lost their way. I think they really dropped the ball here, but I might explain that later. As to what the bright bugs do when you ingest them. More twinkling. I need it. I need... Wait. What am I at? Oh, three, so I need nine more. Okay, well, I can at least level up one more. But in this marshland, below the earth, <laughs> or below something, we have this serene hut. In this marshland here. I'll look at all these guys. They have good aim. But I will say for now that uh, the singing is what makes these uh, bright bugs dance. And it keeps these little things at bay. Could be two that for two human effigies. I figured there was something cool over there because they were being guarded by so much. But anyway, once the lady stops singing, these bugs will go away, and then these guys will no longer be pacified. demonstrator right there. I'm gonna go around back first here. Grab this. Get some crimson waters. There would be a lot of that stuff around here because a lot of the Lindell people are here. And in this humble shack 
here in the marshland we find someone who looks very similar to the lady that we saw up in the highest part of the tower. We knew you were coming. And stopped singing. Okay. I love the uh, the music here. I mean, there's not like a lot of music that just plays in the background of of areas in Dark Souls, but they do it a few times, and you know this is one, and I really like it. I love how it's just her singing. It's very, uh, very nice. We are Milfanito. We are here to sing to those bound by death and dark. So they are Milfinito, not to be confused with Melfia. Um, but they also have the word Nito in their name, and they are from. They are. I don't know what she just said, but they they uh, are concerned with death and dark. So I'm assuming that Milfinito might be are related to Nito, and if that bright bug is in any indication, there is a crypt coming up. So. We will sing here, forever, as we always have, from long, long ago. We know nothing of the world outside, and why should we? For we will never leave. Okay, so they're bound to this place, at least in some sense, and they sing while they're here. Do you seek King Vendrick? But she knows about Vendrick, yes we do. But what is a king, after all? We know nothing of the world I was going to say, you won't know what a king would mean. Will never leave here. Yeah, you said that. When we sing, the little ones dance. The little ones grant comfort to those who bear death and dark. This is what we were taught. So, it seems that the enemies that attack us here in the water are have death and dark in them, and when they uh, the little ones dance, they comfort those. It almost seems like if you were to want to, you know prevent someone full of death and dark from coming here, you might set up these women to sing so the little ones could comfort them or pacify them so they could no longer move forward. Hmm. Is there anything wrong? Perhaps this will help. <laughs> Why she has one of those, I have no idea. This is all that we can do. When we sing, the little ones dance. The little ones grant comfort they to bear those death who bear dark. death and dark. This is what we were taught. So, it might become more explicit later, but, um, you know, it would seem that, um, you know, this place might have been created or utilized to prevent those with the dark from proceeding. And King Vendrick came through this passage. Start singing again. I like how those guys are roaming now. Huh. There we go. And now they go back to being passive. Let's take out these guys one at a time. And then... I get both. One's running, so I can take care of them separately, at least. Wow, these guys are way easy with my setup, or they've, they've really made them easier. Like, I guess I just stagger easily, or I, like I break poise or something? I don't know. Because I used to have to always backstab these guys. 
and a bunch of essentially useless items. Just just consumables. Um, yeah, I mean, as I say, I don't want this episode to be about Shrine of Amana. I just want... I just want to get to the main bonfire, and then I will kind of... Um, okay. Dragon Shrine. And we'll just take on the rest of the shrine in the next video. A lot of bright bugs there. We saw these guys, which were associated with Hugo, in uh, the gutter. Guess we could look at what these guys are. They have multiple eyes and a really weird tongue. And they drop smooth, silky stones, which, okay, so if they drop them, then maybe that makes sense why the Milfinito had one, but. And more twinkling. We need more. And there's what looks like a passage here. Not sure what that, I mean. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, just look at this place. It's so cool. I mean, it certainly is a. It is a variation of what we've seen so far. Crumbled runes. Okay, so let us just uh, say that we didn't do the first part of Shrine. We can come back here. Uh, let me pop some souls and we'll get everything all... going on here. And I guess since we have the time, I'll just level up on camera here and do everything. Can even go to the crows and trade some stuff. Well, let's let's upgrade Ooh. the uh, Santier spear. I need four more now, and then we can use that, which I think I will. Um, let's give the shard. To see luck, however. Let's level up. Uh, I don't know, I'm kind of digging endurance at this point. We could, uh, you know, re, uh, redo stuff too at the last minute. I knew. And now we have a new armor set. You need armor. I know this for a fact because I just looked at it. All right, let's learn more about the Looking Glass Knight. Mask worn by the Looking Glass Knight made of metal, but has high lightning defense. Those who wish to serve the king as loyal warriors must take the king's passage and face the Looking Glass Knight. Those who fail the test are sacrificed by the merciless specular mon monstrosity. So I guess this is where how you become a cyan, sure? a cyan knight, as those are the highest ranked uh, members of Vendrick's guard, and will obviously. We'll see a lot of the uh, Cyan Knights. I would not venture it, but did you see the flame? Oh, you know what? Another thing I wanted to do was talk to Moglin. He might have something to say.
Looking for art? <laughs> I'm rich! I don't need home. <laughs> I'm I don't home. Are you sure? Nope. Never mind. Um we spoke to them. Does uh Chloan offer anything new? You've been long well. Yes, well. Poison and bleedstone, we don't really no, need those. Trade. Um, alright, let's go trade some stuff. Because who knows, maybe we'll get lucky and get some rare item or something. Origins of its name are unclear. Its tremendous weight suggests that it was never intended for humans. Perhaps it was an offering to the demons that appear in legend. That's good. I don't think we read that. It's something you can trade for in the original game, and that's how we originally got it to read about it. So I think I might just be confusing with that, which is cool. This gives us an opportunity to get some twinkling, which will be good. I just want twinkling. I mean, all this stuff is not going to be used by me. Oops. I'll use that, I guess. Okay, whatever. All right. Well, that should be good. I don't think there's anything else. Do we have a, like a sublime bone dust or something? We have some bonfire aesthetics. No, that's it. All right, cool. Well, um, thanks for watching, and uh, join us next time when we um, travel to and complete the Shrine of Amana. Bye!